Hello friends! It's time for another edition of Let's Look at My Crap. The only game show where we look at my crap. Yeah, so it's it's time to, to do that again. We haven't done that in a while. Um, also, I wanted to give you guys something while I'm in between videos. I'm trying to do longer, more comprehensive videos with higher production values that they're mostly just center on, you know, longer term reviews again, which has gotten really hard to do during the pandemic. But I think it's better to put out less content that's of a higher quality. So that's what I'm gonna try. And if it doesn't work, I'll go back to what I was doing, but I at least wanted to give this a whirl. So we're here in my piano room uh, with all my crap on the floor. So this is the stuff that I've been primarily training with lately. So when I'm not reviewing something, this is the stuff that I focus on learning to use better for self-betterment or personal enjoyment or whatever the fuck you wanna call it. So a lot of stuff has changed here. The main thing though is my carrier. My main carrier these days is not the Cry JPC 2.0 anymore. Uh, you may remember a while back I said I was gonna try the SPC and whichever of the two I preferred, that's what I would go with. Well, I massively prefer the SPC. I don't just like it a little bit more. This is the best carrier that I've ever used. I love it. So I have some issues with my left arm, I have some, uh, atrophy problems and it's it's some partial paralysis, that arm is a really useless piece of shit. And so I needed a carrier that would take some weight off of that shoulder. The JPC doesn't feel heavy and it doesn't really, really uh, compress that area too much, certainly no more than any other carrier. But because of this cummerbund, you see how this is supporting itself and sitting upright. It takes a ton of pressure off of my shoulders. The weight feels so much more evenly distributed. It almost feels like, um, what's the uh, cry carrier with the sort of like uh, cummerbund system that, that lifts the weight off of you, the bigger carrier? I can't remember. I don't remember which one it is. But anyway, this is kind of like that, only it's a sort of minimalistic design. It's really great. Super lightweight, really clever. I love this design. In fact, uh, let's look at the JPC next to it. So you can see that the JPC sort of has no form, it just kind of falls over. That's not a bad thing at all, but it just doesn't lift as much weight up off of my shoulders. So definitely preferring the SPC. So um, uh, as you can see, uh, doing the kind of all black thing right now for a lot of reasons. One, I just really like wearing stuff that's black. But also, I have so much green stuff, I just wanted a change. I also thought about multicam, but but I also didn't go with multicam because I've never served my country and the folks serving our country wear multicam and it felt a little bit too much like cosplaying to me. Again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't wear multicam. I'm just telling you that for me, I prefer black and green because it just feels a little bit more respectful, I guess. It's like uh, if I wear multicam, I, I worry that I'm saying, yeah, see, I'm good enough to wear this too when you know I'm just some fucking schmuck out there shooting guns and uh, yeah, so I'd rather just, just choose, a, uh, choose a different color for myself so that I don't give anybody the, uh, the wrong impression. If you've served, I wanna hear your thoughts on this. Do you care when people wear multicam? Does it matter to you at all? Do you think civilians should, should choose a different camo, maybe tropical multicam or something like that? That's something else that I'm interested in. Or, or does any of this matter at all? Just, uh, just let me know, because I'd, I'd like to uh, develop a more informed opinion there. So. On the SPC, up front, I have a Spiritus Microfite Mark IV. I love these, they're awesome. I've, I've got quite a few of them, including one in multicam that I tried for a while, and that's when I kind of realized, yeah, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if multicam is for me. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go back and give that another try based on uh, uh, what y'all tell me about multicam. Let me get my fucking cap back on there. I don't know why that's bothering me. <laughs> All right, so. Inside of the Microfite Mark IV, I usually use the elastic inserts. And I almost did that here, but just because I wanted to try it, I bought one of these Midwest Tactical Solutions Kydex inserts. Let's look inside there if we can. Yeah, so I never had any trouble indexing with the elastic, but I know that some of y'all did, and you'd ask me about Kydex options. So I just wanted to give it a try so that I could uh, have a better, more informed opinion. I just wanted to give it a try. And so far, I do like the Kydex slightly more. Is it a radical difference? No, it's certainly not. But I think my reloads are slightly faster and that's worth something to me. So I think it was a, it was a, worthy, a worthy change for now. 
Will it be permanent? I don't know. I'm not sure that anything's ever permanent with all my crap. I'm always changing stuff out. Those do go in really easily though. Up front, I've got this AXL insert. You can kind of put whatever you want in there. You can put you some snacks, a uh, Leatherman, a knife, a flashlight, a couple of each, whatever suits your fancy that day. This is attached to my source water bag, as you can imagine, which is in this cry uh, pouch back here. I've got some auxiliary medical stuff in here, some extra chest seals, that sort of thing. These pouches are really nice. Uh, just if you need to mount a water bag, I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. Not the cheapest way, but it works really, really well. Oh, everything's getting all caught on and everything else. This is a Spiritus pouch, general purpose pouch. I'm using it for a medical. Got a tourniquet here, spare tourniquet inside. And inside, lots of medical stuff. Medical stuff is probably more important than shooty stuff. So don't skimp on the medical, don't skimp on the medical training. So a lot of people are buying those AXL inserts that attach the chasm clips or whatever they are, jism clips, whatever, that attach those a little bit lower. I'm not finding that this sits too high on the stock one though. You can see, I mean, that's pretty much almost at the bottom there, but this is a small, um, I'm 5'8", I weigh about 160. I'm a fairly small person, so the small works great for me. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe on the larger carriers, you, you, you do need those. But Cry has changed something uh, about the, the way this seam is done. And so the stock AXL doesn't fit on here. So that's a problem. It's not really AXL's fault if you know, Cry changes something. I think they're, they're taking care of it for me. Um, at, uh, now they're they're going AXL speed though, so it's it's taken <laughs> it's taken a while to get that done. But I can't blame them. They're they're basically you know making me a, a fucking custom solution. So that's really really nice of them, and I massively appreciate that. And AXL makes crazy awesome stuff. I promise we'll look at the shotgun stuff, but let's look at this AR-15 pistol and AK pistol first. So the AR-15 pistol you have seen before, uh, possibly many times. You can see I've also been enjoying the 20 round magazines. Super cool. Um, I can't tell if I like them mostly for aesthetic reasons, <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I'm liking those lately. So we still got all the EOTech stuff on top. I think that's a great solution. The EXPS3 is really fast in a variety of situations. The magnifier is very useful. I'm strongly considering getting a five power magnifier to stick on there. I think that's probably gonna happen. All the small bits are the same. The only thing that's really changed is this is now a mod light up front instead of a surefire. So the practical tactical minimalist told me that I would probably prefer a mod light to surefire and he was right. Uh, once I got into them, yeah, these have a much nicer beam. The whole unit is nicer. For a long time, I don't know why I avoided them. I felt like they were a waste of money. I'm not really entirely sure why I did that. I just for whatever reason felt like mod light was unreasonably expensive and it's really not they're really not that much more than the surefires for a substantially better light so i don't know why i was resistant to that that was stupid but otherwise it's the same thing you've seen before the ak pistol you have only seen if you saw my ak pistol sort of preliminary video the longer review is in the works but it is going to be a very long one because this is the one of the things that I've shot the most during the pandemic and I wanna do this right because my God, it's been an odyssey getting this thing to this point. Holy shit, it had some problems in the beginning, some rather hilarious problems. Like the piston was bent, it was, God. But PSA fixed it and they, they, they did a really good job. So uh, on the one hand, they shouldn't have sent it out with a fucking crazy bent piston, but then they also, fixed it. So, you know, and it's been great since. Up top, we've got an MRO. The MRO will probably not be permanent because MROs work better for me closer to my face. Uh, and this has all this wiggle in the top cover. I don't know if you can see that. And that definitely makes a difference <laughs> at distance. So I need to mount something further uh, up front 
probably going to do an Aimpoint T2, I think, just because I've been kind of wanting to try one of those. I think this would be a good opportunity to do that. And then if that doesn't work, if there's still too much wiggle, then I'll probably mount it on the front rail up there, which I really don't want to do. But if it comes to that, that's what will have to happen. Magpul K2 grip, my favorite grip. ALG trigger, absolutely fantastic trigger. PSA put this like enhanced safety on there, which I really, really like. You know, I was kind of uh, critical of the AK platform in my uh, preliminary video, and that pissed off a lot of AK people. First of all, I don't understand this fucking irrational attachment to inanimate objects. If, if somebody expressing their opinion about a device that they're using sort of rankles you, like, get a fucking grip on yourself, for fuck's sake. What is wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but more than that, uh, if you've, if you've watched the channel, you know that I also just really enjoy riling people up and this was a great opportunity to do that. Uh, SLR handguard up front. This is an absolutely outstanding, uh, piece of, uh, equipment. What the fuck was I trying to say there? This is a great piece of gear. It's really awesome. Another mod light. Both of these are uh, PLH V2s. I really like that on, on this sized gun. Um, I've tried some of the OKWs, I think, but those I have those on other things like my ARX and uh, uh, my 16-inch AR-15 uh, rifle. On the pistol, I felt like the PLH uh, V2 would be a better option. I've also got the mod button on top there. Yeah, like that a lot. That's great. But one of the things that unexpectedly impressed me the most, this JMAC muzzle brake. This is the best muzzle brake I've ever used. It is incredibly effective. It reduces the recoil massively. I don't know, 60%, 70%, it's crazy. Now, there is a shitload of blast, like a crazy amount of blast, but you get so much recoil control, I'm not sure I care. So <laughs> I think this is an awesome, awesome piece of gear. Highly recommend it. It's really, really excellent. So, so far I'm enjoying my time with the AK. I have been critical of the platform, and I think fairly so. And uh, those of you who disagree with me, that's fine. You can disagree as long as you manage to uh, keep a, a fucking hold on your emotions. It'll be all right. All right, moving to the pistols. Oh, yeah, we need to talk about this up here. Speaking of the AK, let's, let's do this first. So this is an STAC placard. I love these. They're fantastic. I just love STAC. STAC makes such good stuff. I've got my pig gloves attached here. These are my favorite gloves these days. I love the pig gloves. But yeah, I just swapped this out for the Microfight when I'm using the AK. Highly recommend it. Love these things. They're inexpensive. You can have one for all the different kinds of magazines that you like to use. Get some. They're awesome. Okay, pistols. So my main pistol, whatever the fuck that means, or you know, just the pistol that I train with the most, is still this Glock 40 in 10 millimeter. I love this gun. It's one of my favorite pistols I've ever had. I love the caliber. This thing is so ridiculously huge and crazy. I just love it. And 10 millimeter in this platform is so completely manageable. I'm not that much slower with this than I am with the smaller nine millimeter. So this makes a lot of sense to me right now. 15 rounds of 10 millimeter, really 15 plus one. What's to hate? Also, Surefire X300. I really like this pistol light. I think Mod Light's putting out a pistol light and I'll probably inevitably switch to those. But for now, the X300 is still probably the best option on the market, I think. Uh, the sights on this are stock. Everything is, is stock here. This is not one of the ones where I changed a bunch of stuff. And then, ah, man, I've, I've switched back to the P30 here uh, for, for my nine millimeter shooting time, whatever that means. This gun is insanely dirty, as you can see. I've had this one a long time. It's got a lot of rounds through it. It's done great, despite the fact that I've, I've been critical of the trigger and a few other things. This is one of my favorite nine millimeter pistols. I think it's amazing. It's one of the best polymer double action, single action hammer fire guns on the market, if not the best one on the market. I can't get enough of it. It's fantastic. It's now wearing Trigicon HD XRs, which are my iron sights of choice. The front lamp went out in a set that I had, and they sent me a, a free front sight replacement. Trigicon is amazing. I, I really like those folks. They make great stuff. And those are the best iron sights that I've ever used. 
really, really awesome. And for holsters, both of these fit in these Midwest Tactical Solutions holsters with the retention. So it's just, it's a Kydex holster fitted to each one, but plus some Safari Land style retention up top, the little, you know, bandy thing that fits up top. I really like having the retention. Safari Land really sucks at making holsters for things that I like. You know, they really just cater to nine millimeter Glocks and a couple other things. And they don't account all the time for red dots and things like that, even though I don't have red dots on these right now. And so I had to find a different alternative and I think Midwest is the answer. Um, they're very reasonable. They seem to be very nice folks. I've had awesome luck with them. Really great holsters and they look fucking cool. The belt is still the S-Tac belt. This is the best belt that I've tried. It's got a velcro -y inner belt thing. I love this belt. I love everything about it. Got my Kiwis here. This is the Gap Pistol Kiwi. Rifle Kiwi. So what do I like about this belt? Well, it's, it's just simple. It doesn't have molly or any of that stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm dumb. And so I need something simple. And this belt is so thick, it holds on to everything tightly anyway, so nothing moves around. It's kind of frozen in place. I just haven't needed the molly. So I've thought about getting the Ferro Bison belt. I'm probably still gonna get one just to try it, but I don't feel like it's as necessary as I once did. This pouch, more medical. I'm gonna try to get here, another one inside, along with some shears and some other stuff. This is a, a, the larger Spiritus General Purpose pouch. I really like these pouches. Again, medical is very, very important. Can't have too much medical. Okay, so I know you really wanna see the shotgun stuff. Let's take a look here. So you can almost consider this stuff to be sort of a, a separate arrangement because I'm kind of just using it with this, with this belt here, which is a Safari Land competition belt thingy, I guess. It's also got an inner belt that goes with it. I thought this basket weave, this fake basket weave was really funny. I had a plain one, but for some reason that, that cracked me up. So I went with that. It's, it's strangely charming. But you know what, let's look at the shotgun first. This is, a, this is one of the things that I'm doing an extensive review of. I've been working on this already for a month and a half. And I just, it's gotta be right because this is my favorite modern shotgun. I love it, so I gotta get this right. But um, this is a Beretta 1301 Tactical with a bunch of shit on it, as you can see. So let's uh, start over here on this side. So we've got an Aridus shell carrier here. So the shells fit down in this thing. Um, most folks are using this as the primary way to feed the shotgun. I just use it to get my first shell out to feed into the chamber. I don't like the thingies that fit up here. I tried that for a while with like a Velcro one just to see if I liked it. I don't like it. So I much, I much prefer this. So I flip it over, get one of these out and, and, and feed it into the chamber and then load all my other ones. I try to quad load them and then I spill shells everywhere like an idiot. But these, uh, these come off so you can carry a bunch of them. I just use the one, maybe I'll get some others. I may try it their way, but I can't get the shells out of it easily enough to, to be very effective with that. Uh, speaking of Aridus, I also went with the CROM, which is an acronym for something conveniently ready optic monster. Yeah, that's the conveniently ready optic monster from Eridus. The RMR kind of sits recessed in that. It's really great. I, I tried putting the RMR just on the standard rail that came on the shotgun, but my face, I was having to hold my face up off of the stock and that was uncomfortable with the shotgun. This shotgun does not have a lot of recoil by any means. It's, it's very soft shooting, despite what people on the internet say about the Blink system. It is, it is soft. 12 gauges, they don't, they don't have that much recoil. And, um, but you still want to get, have a good, have a good, uh, cheek weld, especially like if you're shooting slugs or something. And it was, it was just applying a little bit too much pressure to my cheek with my face lifted off of it. So I like having the RMR lower. I have a, a very good cheek weld with this, where it is there. You also have this ghost ring there. They also have the half ghost ring. I'm probably going to pull that off entirely. I don't tend to like to have irons with an optic. I just... For me, you, if you like having backup irons, fucking great for you, but I don't need that. I don't, I've never had an optic break. Now that I'm saying that one's gonna inevitably break, but so far I've had great, great luck with that. 
Moving up front here, we have a Surefire M600DF. So why do I have the 600DF on here and not on the rifles? Well, it's because of this. I'm using this, this pressure switch here. And this sucks a lot of lumens. This is a Surefire brand pressure switch. It's not very good. It sucks between 20 and 25% of the, the, the lumen output. And I, I didn't feel like I should put a, a very nice expensive mod light on there only for all those lumens to be sucked up by the, uh, the stupid uh, tape switch. Eventually I'll come up with some kind of solution. I'll maybe screw down a mod button or something or one of the Unity buttons here, screw it to the handguard. I just haven't decided what I'm gonna do with that yet. So we're going with this for now. The tube is Nordic Components. I think this holds nine, two and three quarters, something like that. I think nine, don't quote me on that. It's a, we've got a Spectre Gear sling. This is my favorite shotgun sling. Full disclosure, they gave me this. So keep that in mind. This was a freebie, but you know that doesn't really matter. I'll still tear into something even if it was free. But this is an excellent, excellent sling, and there aren't really enough sling options for shotguns, especially for the Berettas, so this is a great option. I highly recommend it. So you'll notice that I haven't changed the front handguard for the Magpul, which there's an Aridus adapter to do that, and I haven't changed the rear one. Also, there's an Aridus adapter for that. Why? I don't, I think this furniture is some of the best around. And I think unless you need the mounting points that the Magpul provides, you shouldn't swap it out. First of all, for me and, and someone who's my size, uh, I'm, a, I'm again, I can't remember if I said it in this video or not, I'm 5'8", about 160 pounds. This stock's fairly short. It's the perfect length for me. I love it. But the reason that I like this so much is this texturing is insanely good. It is so comfortable. I just have no interest to swap this out for the Magpul stuff. I really don't want to, so I haven't, and I don't plan to. Don't think that's gonna happen. So, the shotgun belt. First of all, the, the pistol that I've been using in conjunction with this is just the Glock 45 with the RMR and the Griffin Micro Comp. Uh, pretty standard, you've seen a lot of that one. Great gun, one of my favorite Glocks, probably my favorite nine millimeter Glock. And I'm using that with my favorite holster. This is a Safari Land something or other. I don't remember what model number it is, but we've got the nub mod there. Essential. Great holster. My favorite holster on planet Earth. I just wish they made it for more guns. And by the way, this is uh, coupled with the uh, uh, QLS system and, and a mid-ride UBL. Um, all of the UBLs you've seen, I guess all both of them are mid-ride, so the same thing goes for the S-TAC. I should have said that when we were over there, but yeah, that's a, a mid-ride too. However, the star of the show here are these shotgun shell mounts. So these let you quad load. This, this clips in to this thing right here on your belt. And these, these things fit in these little holes. It's, it's pretty ingenious. It works kind of like the QLS system. I guess it's exactly the same, just kind of reversed. Let's see if I can do this one-handed without making a total ass of myself. Probably not. I don't think if I can do it, I can do anything without making an ass of myself. Yeah, look at that. So this lets you quad load. Normally this would be filled out with, with shells. Um, but And by the way, I just have these out here for demonstration. There is no ammo in the shotgun. There's nothing in the tube. There's nothing on the shell carrier. There's nothing in the chamber. So that's, these are just over here separately, so, so don't be alarmed. So you, you can get four of these at a time. I'm learning to quad load, it's not great. I still spill shells everywhere, but I'm trying. So maybe I'll show you my progress in a video so that you can laugh at, at that. We can, we can laugh together at my, my stupid ass. So you get these, these out and it hangs on to all of them. They all kind of, kind of clip in, it's, it's really great. You can, you can pick any one of them, any, any two, any three, any four, and uh, it hangs on to the rest of them. This is really hard to do with one hand. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so you see how that comes off because I knocked it loose like a genius. So this is more robust than I was thinking it was. I, I was thinking it would drop shells everywhere, but it's, it's actually, it's really functional. I think this is a, a great piece of hardware. I like it so much that I've got two of them. 
Got a uh, S-Tac rifle pouch, double pistol gap pouch. Uh, Kiwis, Kiwi pouches is what those are called. Um, but yeah, two of these, I really like them. I think this is a great shotgun setup to train with at the range. Is it useful for anything more than that? Fuck if I know, I, I have no idea, probably not. But for the range, really, really excellent. But uh, the star of the show is really the Cry SPC. I can't say enough good things about this. This this carrier for me was kind of a revelation. It's the most comfortable carrier I've ever tried. It, you know, if I were to try to quantify the benefits of the Cummerbund, I don't know, maybe everything feels 20% lighter to me wearing this, just because of how it redistributes the weight. Very impressed. If you maybe have some problems with one of your limbs or other appendage, Ooh, whatever that means, uh, this might be one that you'd, you'd want to try. There's, it's a little bit hard to get right now. Uh, I think I had to wait three or four months, something like that, for it. But it was absolutely worth it. And I highly, highly recommend it. It's great. Why do you all ask me about my music stuff? Uh, we are not in my music room. My, my actual home studio is in a, in a different room. But uh, hilariously, for all the Fender and Gibson stuff that I have, my favorite basses are these Squire Classic Vibes basses. I get the uh, frets leveled, I put a bone nut on them, really nice pickups, really nice electronics, and I think they rival anything under 12 or 1300 bucks. They're great. And uh, you see my Egyptian Book of the Dead there, Chopin on my piano, and then my bookshelf is a, a fine collection of history books and occult books. Some probably some, there's probably some George R. R. Martin or, or something on there too. But uh, anyway, thanks for uh, playing Let's Look at All My Shit today. We've looked at all my shit and I'll see you again next time for another episode of Let's Look at All My Shit, the only game show where we look at all my shit. Until next time, I've been the Gun Penguin and this is my shit. What? Bye. What the fuck am I talking about? Hope you all have a wonderful evening. I will talk to you soon. Hopefully there will be a longer video next time. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. And I'll, I'm just fucking repeating myself.